And what's been your best win so far? Got to be the finals of uh, the National Youth Championship as the best. Harry Armstrong was fighting Johnny Fisher last weekend, and they had, like, I think they were looking for a sparring partner. I had my brother put my name forward. I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I ain't going to shy away from nothing. That's experience as well. So I, I got in there. I think I must have impressed the Dong Charles uh, coach, and he was like, can you stay another week to like, spar Harry? I was like, yeah, perfect. That is so good. How was it sparring Moses? I'd love to know. Oh, try and hit and move, really, but that guy, his stance is, like, he's bigger than me. I remember like this guy, no matter where you move, he was always in punching range of you. So you're a two-time national champion. Are you planning on turning over? Yeah, definitely. I want to win everything this year. And if everything goes to plan, an offer comes along, perfect. We'll go for it. Are you from a boxing family? No. No, just you and your brother just then? Just me and my brother. <laughs> Literally just me and my brother. So when did you guys start? Well, actually, there's, there's four of us in total out of me and my brothers. So I'm the youngest and the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, my middle brother, who's younger than Harvey, obviously my other brother who does boxing, but older than me, he's the first one who got into it down at uh, Brighton Hove ABC. And then I picked it up and then I started training and then Harvey got into it. Then I had a rest and then I fully got into it when I was about 15. Okay. I just thought, yeah, that's it. I'll get into it then and then. Not look back? No. Nah, How big back. were you at 15? Were you always, have you always been big? When I was 12, I was 93 kg. Bloody hell. <laughs> yeah. and how much do you weigh now? Uh, 110. Wow, that's mad. Yeah. And are you still amateur at the moment? Still or you, amateur, yeah. Are you planning on turning over? Yeah, definitely. Want to win everything this year. And so then is this like your last season then? See. See how I do. See how I do. I'm hoping if everything goes to plan mm -hmm. and uh, an offer comes along, then perfect. Brilliant. We'll go for it. And you're So you're a two-time national champion, right? Yeah, two-time national champion. I'm guessing now you're an elite. There's only a few people on the circuit in the country for you now at your weight. Depends who's... Who's got it in them, really? Down down south, there's hardly anyone mm -hmm. for me. But um, I think more northern of the country, there's a good few people. But depends on the category you go into, like what championship they're entering, what I'm entering. And if we all match, oh, if we all match tennis, you know, it'll be perfect. Have you experienced a lot of pullouts and like oh, traveling and yeah? When I was a youth, uh, I went all the way up to. North Yorkshire, uh, just by Newcastle. And uh, got all the way there, got to fight day. I stayed overnight on the Friday, I boxed on the Saturday. Uh, got to the Saturday, I weighed in everything, my opponent didn't turn up, and then I was just gutted. But every time, I, don't, I think I had two fights as youth in three years, or two years. And how many pullouts as a youth? Oh. <laughs> Countless, really? at least above 15, 20. Oh, that's 100%. messed up. So I'm guessing, did that ever make you sort of want to just stop boxing for oh, a little without while? Without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. It hit a point after that championship where I was thinking, like, is this, is it going to be the same when I turn senior as like an elite athlete and like elite fighter? Like, I can't be wasting time, even though I'm still young. Mm -hmm. How old are you? 19. 19? Oh, very yeah, young. Yeah, 19, but even you don't have time in boxing. Mm -hmm. People think you do, but when you go pro, you have two, three fights a year. Mm -hmm. And as an amateur, you could be fighting, you want to be fighting three times a month, really, ideally. Well, yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah, it's and how many up. fights have you had now? I've had 12. 12, okay. 12, yeah. And that's 12 senior fights or 12 uh, total? I've had three senior fights and then the rest were youth and junior. Okay, nice. Yeah, so. We'll and what's been it. your best win so far? Got to be the finals of uh, the National Youth Championship as, as the best. No feeling like it. <laughs> Who was it against? It was against a kid from the Midlands. I think he bought to Tamworth then. Uh, Toby Wilden. Hit hard. Oh, dear. I'm guessing they all do, Yeah, right? oh, mate. He came out. And obviously, this is still in head guards. He came out. This, the bell went. I thought the day before he got by straight through to the final. And uh, I thought the day before he's come out. The rest gone, yeah, perfect. Gone straight out. He's caught me with his clean one, too. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to get caught with that for the rest of the fight. <laughs> but he was, uh, he, I think he got like a couple points taken off. 
can't remember what for, but yeah, that kid hit hard. He hit hard. W- would you say it's the hardest hit you've been against in? In a fight, definitely. Yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. He's up there in sparring as well. Yeah. Sparring one of the hardest so, hitters. Have you sparred him as well around? Yeah, we've done a lot of sparring at, uh, at the GB. Mm-hmm. And we was both on like the talent pathway. Like it was just me and him really. And uh, yeah, we've done quite a few rounds there. And it's competitive rounds, obviously, because yeah. when you've had a fight against and then you're sparring after, you're still at that level where you want to And you, you want to impress as well. Yeah, you want to impress because the coaches you're in front of, the people you're in front of, and where you're at as well, where yeah. you're at. And there's cameras everywhere. <laughs> My name is Dennis Domenes McCann, professional boxer for Frank Moore and MTK Global. This is Fortress Boxing. A lot more protection. It's a no-brainer. It's around, your, around your thumbs, around your knuckles around my wrist, that's exactly where I have the problems at. They're very compact, so I feel like I'm punching hard with them on as well. And I feel like when you were, when you got a spar on 14, 16 ounce gloves, the smaller wraps can't really, they're too small for the gloves, that makes sense. So these are a bit bigger and they're getting the gloves a bit more, they're making them more compact. How did you get called up then? Was it as soon as you become national champion, you sort of uh, got like a letter through the post or something? Yeah, I think it was as soon as I uh, turned national champion. I think I got an offer to do like a trial day in uh, in Birmingham, and then I obviously must have been pressed on that to then be asked to do like a trial, uh, not like a trial plan, a training plan, where you go up there every two months, I think. So then once you go up every two months, you do a whole day of training and then do it again two months later. But yeah, it was good work. Was and good. what's that one day of training? Can you talk us through the day? You get there, um, warm up, uh, you weigh in, you have to weigh in every time. At what time? Uh, this usually about half 10, half 10 in the morning, you weigh in and then they're, the coaches there, like there's so many of them, so many coaches. They've gone separate groups, so they'll put you in like a uh, weight classes group. So you have, say, 50 kg to about 65 kg, or like 70 kg, and then you have the rest all the way up to my weight, which is 92 plus. But then you'll be working in separate groups. So you have three or four different groups, I think it was, where you have one group, which will be you're working on footwork and like more defensive style of boxing. But then you have another group where you're doing like technical bits, and then uh, you have another group where it's weird because it's more like Cuban style, where you're like more focused on the athleticism side of it, mm-hmm. where you're trying to work. And then it'll get to about one o'clock, I think, two o'clock. You have a half hour lunch, can't eat much. <laughs> yeah, of course. So then uh, while you're doing that, you'll swap sides with the other group, and then you're going to sparring. And then you're sparring for, I think you do about six rounds. Mm-hmm. Six Is it rounds. like three on and then do Yeah, time I think off. you do three. And then you, uh, I think if I can remember correctly, you do three and then you let another weight do three and then you're back in for three. Or if there's more than one sparring partner, you'll do three and then they'll do three and then it's just non-stop. Did you have, how many sparring partners were there for you? Uh, Did they put you with the 92 kilo group as well? With the no, 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 they didn't, weirdly. I thought they might have, but I don't know, they're quite strict up there, very strict. But one time I sparred, um, obviously I sparred Toby, but then it was, uh, it was in prep for the youth at the time, Euros, which was at that, like Moses Atalma, uh, Damar Thomas, so I, was, I sparred Moses, which was, whew, as you can expect if you've seen his fights now, like his prospect of what he is. I sparred him and then, uh, I had about forty minute break and I went and sparred Demar, which is fucking that's hard as well. <laughs> yeah. That's hard, hard work. So it's six rounds and they try and get you when it's like not, well, kind of off season, because they're obviously in prep. But like if you're not in that team, then like you're enjoying it, like your life a little bit. Because when you're in camp, you're in camp. Yeah. But it was good work. Very and good work. How was it sparring Moses? I'd love to know. <laughs> oh. What what was the game plan going in? Obviously you knew how talented he is. Yeah. Was at it just time, try not to get hit too much? or Yeah, just try and hit and move, really. But that guy, his stance is... Like, he's bigger than me. He's, mm. he's like, I've got a picture of me and him, and he mounts over me. And at the time, I was thinking, blimey. And, like, everyone was going on about how 
like his record was good, how hard he hits. I was like, all right, well, we're gonna see. Like, I want to like see how good he is. And I remember like this guy, no matter where you moved, he was there. His like he was always in punching range of you. I remember and uh, I, I think I caught him. With, I was on the ropes. So I caught him with a clean backhand, uh, which my coach told me to throw. And uh, so I caught him with that, and I just thought in my head, "What have I done?" <laughs> as soon as I landed that, I thought, "I've got to go." So I tried moving, and he's just unloading, and I was like, "Blimey, this guy hits." Yeah, could you could good. you tell he was going? You know, he was sort of going through the gears, and yeah, just, yeah. That you could tell when he steps it on. Like mm-hmm. usually, you can't really tell when you're sparring like your average person, average boxer, or average pro. You could tell like they're usually one gears, but this guy has three, four, five gears. Like yeah. one when he's all calm and he won't hit, and then he'll even throw a jab and he'll just keep popping the jab, and then he'll come two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. But then he's just he just steps it up. People that don't box don't understand how many levels there are. Oh, Obviously, no. you are so talented. You're national champion for your own reason. You know you've had some great wins, but there's so many different levels. Yeah. And you know that's that's the beauty of it. It's, it's addictive, isn't it? Yeah, Obviously, it is. for you, you know you're still young. You know you want to get to that top level, yeah. and it's just sort of climbing through the rankings and learning. And people don't understand that even if you go against someone that's that that bit better than you. Like, you feel like you can't even box against them. No. You know, sometimes yeah. you can't even land a glove on a guy in a whole it's round. And, and you're pretty good yourself, yeah. you know? Yeah, And that's just, that's boxing. And yeah, that, that, I think that's the addictive part to it, right? As, like, you want to get to that level where you're you're doing that to the people that are coming for sparring for you. Mm-hmm. Like, people like Moses, they must think, even when they spar, like, the big pros, and they're bringing the fight to them, where these pros are thinking, blimey, I've had 20 fights and stuff and like this guy this kid's still just turned pro or still a youth and like, he's bringing me to fight he's like he's yeah. sticking on me I'm thinking and they must think blimey <laughs> do you, I wish do you think uh, do you think Moses would be world champion oh 100% 100% yeah. I think if they don't rush it I do I think if they don't rush it because I see he keeps getting a hand problem mm-hmm. in his last fight and his fight before that so I think if they don't rush it like don't try and uh, obviously Try and beat the records like from Mike Tyson, but do it, do it good, do mm-hmm. it perfect. Yeah, don't like, don't overdo it and like get these injuries because later on in your career, people say it all comes back to haunt you. Definitely. So just take your time with it. I think he definitely will though. I've yeah. never been hit like like I have him. He hits. And I'm guessing that he probably had what 16 or 18 ounces. I'm guessing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even bigger gloves Literally. at the time. And I, I think they told him to go calm as well, because. Uh, one of the coaches told me he was sparring the week before, a senior up there, and uh, this senior was supposed to be like really good, this uh, elite uh, elite boxer. And apparently Moses cleaned him out, like knocked him spark out while this guy was unconscious for about an hour, apparently. Oh, wow. So, and, uh, yeah, but luckily I didn't get him in a bad mood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you that. only landed that one yeah. big right. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I was trying not to, you know, like land or yeah. take, well, land big shots. Obviously, I wanted to land, but not like <laughs> how, one that's how have you off. How have you found sparring? Obviously, guys, your weight, your experience in that. Like, it must be so much more difficult. Like, for me, it's so easy. There's so many guys my size. Yeah. Do you have to travel a lot or do you just sort of try and maybe train with your brother a lot more? Do you bounce off of him maybe? Me and my brother... Uh, we used to train together, but now we're like we train at separate gyms, and we try not to. We don't try not to, but our times clash. Like I train evenings, he trains all day every day, really, because he's like a pro now. Uh, so he trains all day every day, whereas me, I can only really slot in evenings when I have to work and everything. But sparring, it's hard, hard down south. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of sparring down here. I've just. Uh, just got back from Spain sparring that Harry Armstrong, which is good. Good sparring. Uh, Where in Spain was that? Uh, that was Sierra Nevada, just nice. by uh, Granada, up in the mountains, 2,500 metres, I think. Oh, brilliant. High altitude, so that was brilliant sparring. The best pre-season you want then, yeah, really? Yeah, best pre-season I could wish for. How, how long were you out there for? I was out there, I was only going Monday to Friday, obviously, to see my brother, because uh, he was in, like, with the Dubois camp and stuff and uh, obviously I was there to see him but then uh, Harry Armstrong was fighting Johnny Fisher last weekend and mm. they had, like I think they were looking for a sparring partner and my brother put my name forward 
I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I ain't gonna shy away from nothing as experience as well. So I, I got in there and I impressed, uh, I think I must've impressed the uh, Dong Charles uh, coach. And he was like, yeah, can you stay another week to like spar Harry? I was like, yeah, perfect. So I think we must've done 20 plus rounds easy. Oh, that's that so way good. above that actually. That is so, so good. Yeah, it's brilliant experience, brilliant. What? And have you fought Tex? Tex, I haven't. My no. brother has twice. Yeah, has yeah he? I haven't boxed Tex, no. <laughs> well, uh, that might be a match in, in the future, 100%. maybe. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'm never shy away from fighting anyone. Yeah. I won't. I love fighting. <laughs> have, have you seen, oh, I'm, you've probably seen his style, and he's so quick, isn't he? Yeah, Tex, such a big for, guy. For, his, for, for a big, big guy, his his hands, his hands for his fast guy. Have you have you sparred him before? No, I haven't, no. funny enough. I, yeah, I, I should, haven't sparred him. You should come down to hop at yeah, the start of the season. Definitely, 100%. I think, uh, as we spoke before about Derek, me and Derek, where we've had our uh, fight, I think uh, I think we might be going into the same championship in mm. September. Brilliant. So, uh, yeah, but me and Tex definitely get the sparring on. So how was it with Derek then? Obviously, we said we'll wait until we're on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Derek, Derek's awkward style. He is awkward style. Like, he's small, isn't he, for, for the weight class. He is small, but he's strong physically strong and uh yeah he's just awkward very good counter puncher yeah that's that is what he is he is a very good counter puncher in uh in that fight i had with him back in march um it was almost like i was jabbing and every time i was jabbing i was getting caught with a jab mm -hmm. by for just by his counter punching knowledge obviously how yeah. quick he is with it have you have you learned a lot from that fight oh yeah yeah i've learned Learned loads. Obviously, you're not going to say too much on <laughs> no, it. No, no. Like, yeah. He might be watching, but yeah. <laughs> so when is the championships? Championships, the weigh-ins on the 9th of September, and then uh, the first round's the 16th, I think. So, so it's a bit pointless you weighing in, really. Yeah, just yeah, turn it up. is. Yeah. You have to travel 45 minutes to an hour just to weigh in and then go straight. I don't even... <laughs> Don't even take my clothes off. <laughs> no, um, it must be quite chill. Well, it's nice. Have you uh, ever watched people do like harsh weight cuts and you just yeah. like, thank God I don't oh, do that? I've seen it. I've been I've been in like with same camp as people who have to cut weight and what they go through. And they're telling me what they're eating and everything. And I'm just there like, yeah, can't really agree with you. <laughs> what, what's your diet like then? Oh, my diet. If I have a fight, I'm spot on. 100% spot what, on. What's like a standard day for you? How many calories roughly? Do you, have you ever counted it or uh, do you just I'm, like I eat usually, clean? Yeah, just eat clean. Eat clean. Don't really count my calories too much unless obviously my strength and conditioner tells me to. Or Yeah, but if I have a fight or I'm in full camp, then it's clean eating. How many meals a day roughly? Three. Three? Only three? three? Yeah. I'm guessing they're massive meals. Or it's, Depends. Depends. Uh... Breakfast is usually good meal, nice, mm. good meal. And then lunch is usually, depends if I have training in the afternoon. And then, uh, but dinner's usually big. Yeah, dinner's big. And obviously now you're like a elite and you're at the top end of the amateurs and yeah. you've got all these aspirations. What's your training like now, like for a standard week? Oh, training now, almost every day. Mm -hmm. Almost every day, sparring at least three to four times a week whether it's in my amateur gym or it's me organising it with my strength and conditioner because obviously he's like big as well. Is this Lewis, yeah? Lewis, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. He's big as well and uh, he's my weight and he's got hands as well. So it's good, it's good work. He's physically really strong. Mm -hmm. So it's good work with him to get rounds in and anyone I can really, anyone I can get rounds in. And what do you think, if there's any amateur boxers watching, what, yeah. what would you say is the best advice to them for, for training? What's like the main thing they should be doing all the time or? Best advice for the amateurs and training is give it your hard work, honestly. I've, I've, I've had it with me, whereas I ain't putting the work for fights. You come out on the wrong decision. <laughs> mm -hmm. You do, you come out on the other end of a loss and then you realize, that's when you realise I didn't put it in. It's, it, it's good though, it's good to learn now, obviously. Yeah. Before yeah, you, yeah. you get to the pro stage. Before you hit that stage where the wins and fights really matter, where you're fighting for the belts and everything, the, you're in the big name fights, that's mm -hmm. when it matters. But now it's just realising what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And what about your strength conditioning? Do you do like full body workouts? Is it quite heavy weights, plyometrics? Uh, usually if we have a fight coming up, say within two, three weeks, we try and drop the weights, like lower it. 
really, where we're not lifting as heavy, but we're still lifting, but more explosive stuff. So when we get in the ring, like we're we're not punching like where we're trying to aim slow and all that and like throw slow, whereas we try and like build on stuff where we're throwing with speed and power at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, all the explosive stuff before, like three weeks before, it's like sprints really. Yeah. Try and not to run far. Have you got any good hills? Is there any good sprints oh, you do in Brighton? Literally, where I live, uh, I, where I live, I've got a big field opposite, literally right opposite me, and uh, it's got hills everywhere. Brighton's Brighton's brilliant for running. Ah, that's sick. <laughs> it is brilliant. Even along the seafront, it's yeah, just it's along the nice views as well. Yeah, good breeze. Yeah, I good. did the Brighton Marathon, and um, oh. yeah, it's just it's just nice. Obviously, yeah. a bit different to sprints, but yeah, it's cruisy. Like oh, yeah. out of all the marathons I've been told, Brighton's the best one. Brighton, yeah, yeah, Brighton. Honestly, for running, obviously you've got all the hillsides, and then you've got the beach, like you just said, and even street running. Mm -hmm. Street running is like it's always it's either hills or it's flat. Mm -hmm. See the hills or flat, so it's good. And good have you got boxes. quite a uh, you got quite a good support network with all your yeah. boxing? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, must I've, you could probably ask Derek yourself. <laughs> well, I'm gonna bring. Obviously, I'm gonna say him because he came down to Brighton for the fight. But every all my last three fights, the support is different, different level. I must get about forty to fifty people there. That's really good for yeah. the amateurs. For the amateurs, yeah. yeah, it's really good. And the noise, it, it people say. I don't know how boxers say oh they can like the support don't build them on or stuff like that i think the support's like 2v1 mm -hmm. i think you're 2v1 in that person you got that home advantage yeah you've, you've got it all even when you got travel away like it's good to have support it's good that you got that mindset already as well because obviously some people might get nervous with a big crowd yeah you know so for, for you to thrive off of that yeah yeah definitely i I love it. <laughs> and especially in the pros, when you want to start selling tickets, uh, you obviously understand like the uh, the process yeah, of everything. It, it's difficult. Of the pros, yeah, it's very it difficult. So the fact that you've got a good fan base already, that's um, that's a great start. Yeah. If you're selling 50 tickets in the amateurs, yeah, yeah, you know, as soon as you have your pro debut, it's going to be... It's going to be hopefully popping off. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Popping off. And, uh, but wait, right, it needs to be in the pros. That's the thing. People mm -hmm. don't realise that. When you're fighting over here in the pros, you for you to even make a bit of money, you have to sell, say, 60 tickets mm -hmm. for you before you even make money. And that's sometimes even if you fight. Yeah. So it's a tough game to fight. And you still got to deal with pull-outs pull and everything else. Literally yeah. Literally everything. Yeah, it's going to be a roller coaster for yeah. you, that's for sure. Especially especially with everything that's going on at the moment with all the, the VADA testing, mm -hmm. the drugs and everything. You never know what's going on with boxing. Yeah, it's better always just, and you start thinking, especially even at your weight, the amount of people that could be taking peds, yeah. regardless, oh. it's um, it's rife. And, yeah. you know, as well, if you're clean as an athlete, part of you must be thinking, well, if these guys are all doing it, then yeah. it's it's such a crappy subject, really. Yeah, it is. What, what do you think is a good way for it to sort of stop happening? Do you think oh, like I think they just need bands? to start banning them. Start banning them straight off. Don't, for Don't like five go. years or something? Yeah, or? Like, I like what Derek Chisora said. Ten-year ban straight away. Mm -hmm. Ten years, because five years you can come back. Say if you're pumping it for those five years still, as soon as you come back, and it just like you're going to have that feeling where you want to carry it on and all that, and there's always new stuff where you can cover things. Mm -hmm. So it's, in five years there might be something where you can cover it, but you're still using it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But yeah, I think ten-year ban straight away. None of this, like... Uh, what you call it, like what Conor Ben's been through, where yeah. it's, it's taken like over a year and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so think. promoters have more say over, like, yeah. you know, like there's a court case and adverse findings. You're like, like they, they just try and make a, neg a positive sample yeah. look like it was not suspicious. Literally, yeah. Which is ridiculous, you know, it's especially when, when you're caught for certain drugs. They're only taken for certain things. You're yeah. never going to get that in a bit of chicken. You're never nah, going to get that nah. in your eggs. <laughs> you're never going to get it in a, your glass of water. Of course not. Like it's you. You're either a cheat or you're not a cheat. Yeah. There's there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Like even with, but I still think you should be given say a week to prove mm -hmm. that you what you what you've been taken to fail that. Like Dillian White against the AJ. Dillian White didn't get a chance to prove that he hasn't that he was uh, negative. He ne he never got a chance. They just cancelled him out of the fight straight away. He got. It, done it was for his it. third time though. Yeah. Yeah. True. It was his third time. But I got, I got told the previous times were from stuff you could buy off shelves, like pre-workout yeah. and stuff like that. Which... But then also, like, 
it's a tough one. I think you should know what you, if you're a professional anything. You should know you, what to you take. You should know what to take. Yeah, definitely. And your coaches especially mm -hmm. should tell you if it's good or bad. Yeah. And what you should be are taking. So I uh, do you know Jack Coat, the nutritionist? Jack Coat. Nah. Um, so he does a lot of nutrition with pro boxers, but yeah. he went out for part of the white camp and uh, he went out with Ernie Rutherford and a couple other people. And um, he said that when he was asked to make uh, some omelette or some eggs or whatever for Dillian, he was like, how many eggs do you want? He was like, 15. What? 15, 15 eggs? eggs? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> that was just like a meal for him. 15 eggs in one go. Oh, so, yeah. you know, the man can eat, yeah, that's for he's, sure. He's a, he's a big guy as he well, is. Dillian. But Dillian then, like, is. nowadays, it's like, like, there's no backbone. If you failed free drug tests for him, as much as I like Dillian, like, he's not caught any heat compared to Conor Ben. No, yeah, true. That is true. I, no one's heard of it since. Mm -hmm. Like, no one, me especially, well, anyone in the boxing scene especially, no one's heard of it. I think Whereas, no news is good for him, right? Yeah. The less, the yeah, better. Yeah, of course, 100%. He, he's going to like that. Even if he's negative, he's still going to like that. His name's not popping off mm -hmm. at the moment. Everyone's going after him. Whereas Conor Ben's obviously had that new thing come up where the protesting the decision I think mm -hmm. of him being clean whereas his name's blown off again already yeah so he's going through it all again yeah I know and I actually I know he's a cheating everything and you know it's clear that he's failed the drug test yeah. but I do feel bad for Ben in terms yeah. of the way the public have handled him slaughtered him really yeah because also think of his mental health I know yeah, obviously what he's done is wrong yeah but then like if that was to anyone else that wasn't you know pretty self-confident or whatever yeah Someone could easily, you know, oh, kill themselves 100%. or do something like the abuse that he's got. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to handle it. No, nah, definitely not. If he didn't have, obviously his dad must have had something or been slaughtered by the public plenty of times. Mm -hmm. So luckily he's got that boxing where well, he's got his dad, he's got Eddie Hearn, he's got his wife. But also he was suspected that his dad was on peds back in oh, the day. Oh, was it? Because obviously he had the big, big fight where he, you know, he pretty much ruined Jeremy McKellen's life. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, there was suspicion of... So he said he was too tired to take the drug test after the fight. Yeah. And he got away with it because back then as well, it was a bit more lax. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, there, there were suspicions back then about him. And, um, you know, if he'd done that and he... Obviously, he's shown what you could do in the ring to someone and his son's doing it. Yeah, his son's doing it. Like, I, I did, don't know. It's mad. It's I did messy. notice a change in Conor Ben, though, from, from one of his early fights when he... Uh, Nearly lost to a journeyman. Yeah, when he was, he got dropped and then uh, obviously since that fight he's been knocking out all these guys. Even though they're old and they've done stuff in their career, that you still, you still like, you still got it. You yeah. still have it in you to uh, you, go to the rounds. You can't improve that much and you no. can't have that much stamina and be that explosive. Oh, definitely not. No you can't. Way. No you can't. way. Did you uh, watch the boxing on the weekend? Did you see all Friday night boxing? Friday night, Warren no, show? I didn't actually. I didn't. I didn't get to watch it. There were some really good fights on. Are you, are you a big boxing fan? Here nah. and there, not really, not really. I ain't a massive fan. Like I won't go out of my way to go to a show or anything like that. And I go unless it's a big, big fight. Like, I'll be watching a fight this coming weekend. But um, yeah, I'm not a massive boxing fan. Mm -hmm. But I see the Dennis McCann fight though. Yeah, that yeah. Good, that looked... Yeah, it was. I think he actually got very lucky though. He yeah. got lucky. I heard this. I see. I I read comments and stuff on all the boxing posts uh, about the fights, and every po every comment there enough was saying robbery, robbery. Mm -hmm. He lost that fight. Uh, people going after Frank, everything. Yeah, I think a rematch is needed for sure. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it was good. It was good. And uh, Ryan Garner was on the undercard, and I think he he had the best performance. Really? Yeah. And um, the guy just before Dennis, not the bloke out in like sixteen seconds. Did he? Yeah. Ooh. He's incredible. These boxers. Yeah, I know. Again, it's one of those things of like, especially for you as a heavyweight boxer, right? Your style. Yeah. Would you say it's completely different to how I would box? Obviously, because you're so much bigger and more powerful. When you train, is it sort of throw maybe three shots maximum, load up, evade, like what what's the what's the difference as a heavyweight in actually your your process in fighting? Is it completely different or do you Well with me I box my coach always obviously my amateur Jim Molsko maybe ABC. Uh my coach Nick, he drills it into no matter what weight you are, he likes you moving, like he likes you on your feet, like ready. Like uh, non-stop, like triggering, uh, so you're always like aware and like always in and out, and always giving your opponent something to think about. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I box more 
I box like I'm a lightweight. Okay. But I'm more of like on my feet. But sometimes I do like settle down and then like look for the shots. Mm -hmm. But I, I try and box like I'm a lighter weight, really. Like always moving, but always giving my like throwing as well. I'm thinking about what I'm going to throw. And uh, just, I try I train like I'm lighter, really. That's definitely better for the amateurs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 100%. But obviously, when you get to the pros, uh, I, I uh, learned this when I was out in Spain. Uh, one of the pro boxers there, Ezra, uh, Ezra Taylor, he was doing like my coaching and uh, stuff he was telling me was just different level. Like he was, uh, he said just, he said the movement's good. He said, but try and like uh, always keep popping your jab, giving them something to think about. He said, uh, and then when it comes to being in the inside, he said, just stand there. He said, you're strong enough. He mm -hmm. said, but this is the pro game. He said, you're not going to know like some most of the stuff like in the clinches and stuff. He said, because you're amateur. He said, in the amateurs, you get five seconds and you get told to break straight away. He said, in the pro games, you get about 10 seconds before the ref even says break. Mm -hmm. So you get to work out and all that. But yeah, it's, uh, in the pro game, I'm going to have to definitely sit on the shots. Sit on the shots. Yeah. And Right but with them. People don't realise. So a lot of people might even see your amateur record and be like, "Oh, he's not knocked that many people out yeah. or whatever." But people don't realise you're you're not looking for it. No, no, you, you're not. looking to win. Yeah, yeah, you're, 100%. And win by any means necessary. Yeah. So you know, if if you land a good shot, great. But you know, that's not really on many people's minds. No. Not, not not unless you've got freakish power. Obviously, yeah, there's yeah, Some people course. that that can blast you out in the amateurs. Like I think Sam Noakes had some great Sam amateur Noakes, oh, knockouts. He's, he's he's got the power. Mm -hmm. Even his brother in the amateurs, I fought on the same show as his brother, uh, Sean Noakes. Yeah. Uh, who me and my brother, uh, my brother's good mates with him, I think. Uh, but I obviously know him and I've been to a few of his fights. And uh, But Sean as well, even like in the amateurs, he has, both of the brothers have power. Like they yeah. hit their hard hitters apparently. Massive. I don't know how uh, how Sam makes his weight oh, at all. He's like, he's, he calls himself, doesn't he? He says, uh, I can't think what weight he is, but he says, um, the Mason Wait. Golovkin. Yeah. <laughs> and he says uh, he's a heavy, he said he's a lightweight, I think, with a heavyweight's hands, how yeah. hard he hits. Yeah. And he knocks guys clean out, he does. Yeah. He sleeps on. <laughs> well, especially, I think, well, at first they called him TKO King yeah. because he just, he couldn't, like, finish it in time. But obviously the ref, for the safety of the fighter, did the right thing. Yeah. And, 100%. like, even though it's nice to see a good knockout, if if the ref can intervene early, then it's I think it's always better. Yeah. Without a doubt, if yeah. the, you could tell if a fight's going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Soon, within the first minute of the first round, you could tell if it's the fight's going to last the whole time. If it's the guy's going to get seriously hurt, and I think the, I think you should know mm -hmm. the ref shouldn't stop stop him early. People slaughter the refs for stop early stoppages, but they're they're the ones right on top of it. They're 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 hearing the punches. They're like seeing what's. Yeah, they're putting into them. Whereas if we're, we're just watching it on telly or TV, you know, what I mean, we're just sitting here, just like ah, oh, the ref stopped that a bit early. But in person, you're you're there. Yeah, people don't. Yeah, on the TV, on your phones, people don't realise just how hard yeah. these punches are. No. Taking some of these shots and taking hundreds of these punches throughout the rounds. Literally. Like it's it's insane. When you see the CompuBox stats for like top rank, and it's like you know you'll see like Inoue for example, and it's like yeah. he's landed. 112 power shots. Power shots. What? Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> you've got you've got one of the hardest hitters in the weight division and 112, 112 power, power shots. Power whatever. shots. Like, people don't realise taking one clean punch is horrible. Oh, it is. To condition Honestly. yourself to to take that many take and that fight many. back. And, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of the toughest sports in the you world, isn't it? You've got to have a good it? chin as well to take 112. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, and, like, even, and you've got to... Obviously, if you're throwing these 112, like you're obviously gonna go looking for it unless you're just naturally like powerful and like got those hard hands, like you're going looking for it. So you're gonna take clean shots mm -hmm. yourself as well. So you gotta have a good chin. To, exactly. To be like that. Yeah. Would you say have you got a good chin? Oh, 100. percent I've I've sparred some top. I've taken clean shots. Everything. I've sparred top people. I I can take punches all day. That's good. <laughs> all That's day, good. every day. Would you say your biggest strength is? Biggest strength in what in what way like punches or uh, just in terms of in boxing yeah what, what would you say your biggest strength is in in boxing in a fight I think nowadays it'll be my size and my natural strength and uh and my, my and my knowledge knowledge mm -hmm. I'm I'm very smart in the boxing in the ring I'm very very smart and which which they uh, everyone out in Spain 
said about me as well. They said, uh, your knowledge for 12 fight amateur uh, boxer, they said it's different. They said, you're so... They said, you think about your shots and you throw shots that no one else would throw. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'd say, I'd say my knowledge is my main thing. Do you, uh, do you ever study a fighter before you go against them? Like, if you've got the championships coming up, would you sort of try and see what's going to work with them or do you, do you just sort of get in there and focus on yourself? I have a little look, you know, I, have a, I do like to have a little look to see, unless I know them personally or like see, heard about them or my brothers like fought them or seen them fight, uh, then I have a little look. I don't try try too much to look, mm -hmm. but you just got to go off styles really. Mm -hmm. Styles make fights and if I'm fighting a big puncher, I always watch, uh, if I've been to all like, I've seen that he's a big puncher, I've been told, I always watch uh, Fury vs Wilder. Mm -hmm. Always watch that, the way Fury moves. Yeah. And dodges that backhand. And the way he actually smothers him as well. Yeah. So many people think to evade punches, you've got to step backwards, but yeah. you can step in. You can step in, yeah. You can you can rough him up, rough him up on the inside. Mm -hmm. So if they're like Wilder, if they're a big puncher, you just got to do, you got you got to rough him up. You can't mm -hmm. try and stand there or like move around and try and box him. It's a 12-round fight. He's going to catch you at some point. You're going to feel that power. Mm -hmm. like, like Javante Davis says, you can't run for 12 rounds. Yeah. You can't like you can't not get hit or feel this power for 12 rounds. Although I do think someone like Shakur Stevenson would be able to outbox oh, Javante Davis. Shakur is very good. Yeah. I've been told this by an uh, an American coach who uh, who I know well, and uh, on the inside he's he said Shakur's the one to beat mm -hmm. Javante if he don't get caught. Mm -hmm. But Shakur, he said Shakur's got it all. He said he's been camped with uh, with Shakur and all these like uh, American big pros. He said uh, Shakur's got it all. He's got the boxing ability. He's got the power. Mm -hmm. He said he's just he's very very good. And obviously you'd want to compare him to like Devin Haney, and Devin Haney's a great champion. He gets yeah. so much hate again. He's yeah, a good he's yeah. a good champion. He's a, good he's a great champion, fighter. Haney, yeah. But then I think Shakur's levels above him. Yeah, I do as and well. And like you said, the power and him just being in the pocket. Like he can actually, he can stay in front of you, like you said with Moses earlier. Yeah. He can stay in front of you in range, and you will not be able you'll, to hit him. No, you'll think you're, you'll be out of range yourself, but mm -hmm. they're in range. Mm -hmm. That's that's Shakur all over. <laughs> Is there any sort of heavyweights that you sort of watch? Like obviously you said about the uh, the Fury Wilder fight. Would you sort of like ever watch that fight before boxing and maybe try and practice some of those moves? Or uh, has it ever been a thing? Or do you just listen to your coaches when you get there? I've actually before my first senior fight, I watched that Fury first Wilder fight. Literally, uh, I think the morning of it, I watched it just to refresh my mind of what because the guy was a massive puncher apparently. But well, so people said stuff. Well, oh, I've got to be like, I've got to be aware aware here. So I watched that the morning just to refresh how Fury does it and how he moves and how when he's on the inside and when you and you can also almost telegraph it. You can see when Wilder's like. Uh, loading up to la throw that big shot. Mm -hmm. So you, and like you try and look at his. I usually look at their collarbones, so you could tell when someone's going to throw into a shot. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just you pick things up. I like to refresh the mind every fight day. Every Definitely. fight day. Yeah, yeah. I, like you can also even just the movement in the ring. Like yeah. not even punches or defending. The way people move around the ring, especially Definitely. when you like see the elites and stuff. Like, I'm, I'm not at that level at all, I'm a novice. But I love watching how they move, and I'll try and, in my shadow, just try and, like, implement it. Yeah. Especially because I'm Southpaw. So, oh, like, you're Southpaw, yeah. Cer love certain it. even, like, feints and little steps yeah. that you can do to get in good positions. Yeah, yeah um, And again, someone like Shakur watching him. Oh. So good. That's what I mean. If you, if you watch pro fights, people say, like, I've heard a few coaches say, like, uh, when you watch pro fighters like you you try and get into that style too much mm -hmm. but they think you should keep your own style i think obviously i agree with it par partially but i think you should watch them still 100 mm -hmm. you should you should uh what's the word study them mm -hmm. you should study their training their uh fighting like terence crawford i think the way he switches stances and his throw shots land shots the way oh, he adapts every this. round as yeah. well. He's he's he comes out a completely different fighter each round. Every round. You, you have no idea. Like yeah, did you see the variation of his jab against Spence? Spence, yeah. It's just yeah. every every type of jab possible. And like he would throw when Spence would throw, he yeah. would then feint the jab and go low. Or like he there was a Dan Morley I had him on yesterday, yeah. and he he said he did a post on it. Um, but it's so clever. Yeah, it is. They're every shot thinking. lands. Almost mm -hmm. every shot landed that fight. It's very rare. That fighter like uh, Bud, mm 
mm -hmm. Crawford will miss a shot because mm -hmm. he's so smart and the coaching team as well. The coaching team is different over there. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, well, USA boxing is probably one of the best in the oh, world. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. If not the best nowadays. Mm -hmm. If not the best. Who's it's... your favourite fighter right now? Favourite fighter? I've always liked Javante the mm. Davis. Always liked him. That power in the hand. It's just... I don't, weirdly enough, I've always liked Wilder. <laughs> I've always liked Wilder. The way he stops people. And mm -hmm. he, Devastating, isn't yeah, it? He yeah. He could be losing 10 rounds of a fight. But if he lands, you're going to sleep. No Luis Ortiz, right? Yeah, literally. He was losing the whole fight. He was losing every fight until it got to, I think it was the ninth round. Mm -hmm. And he landed. That's it. Fight over. Yeah. This, uh, this, this boxing. <laughs> it is impressive. This is boxing. Yeah, I love, um, well, it's so basic, but you know, jab to the body, jab to the body, yeah. drop their hands, right drop hand hands, over the yeah, top. Straight over the top. Like, love that. In the pros, like you, you, you would think now, obviously it's so, so normal, but taking, taking those big jabs to the yeah. body, it, it works so no, effectively. Yeah, it does. You think uh, they'd clock onto it, or the mm -hmm. coaches at least would start telling your fighters to throw body shots, like jabs to the body. Mm -hmm. it's, even, it's good for your range as well. If you you can get their jab to the body no matter who you jab to the body as soon as you land it you see them clinch down like that mm -hmm. they clinch up so you can either step in and then start throwing the wide shots like hooks and stuff or you can like you said throw it again give them time to reset throw it again and then as soon as you go to throw that other next jab they're going to drop their hands because they mm -hmm. don't want to they don't want to get caught with it for a third time then you've got that clean sweet overhand exactly it's, that do, do you do you find shot. it hard with uh, your gas tank at all in any fights? No, I've, no? I've never. Unless I haven't fully trained for it, of course. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I've always been fit enough. Always, always fit, no matter what. Hundred percent. Brilliant. And have you got any sponsors already, or have you um, looked into that yet? I can't. I don't want to say one of them because uh, I ain't really spoke to him yet since my last fight. But. Uh, I need to actually message him. I'm going to message him after this, actually, and see if we're still carrying it on. But, uh, but uh, obviously, Lewis, he's, he's like a sponsor, uh, LC Performance. So that's good. Uh, he like does our strength conditioning and uh, just helps us out, really, mm -hmm. which is always good. But, uh, yeah, always looking for sponsors. It's hard. It's hard to get sponsors. It is, because obviously I know you said that you work as an amateur. Yeah. And obviously if you want to be the best of the best, Sometimes working 40 hours a week, yeah. how are you ever going to be at the best of your how potential? You do it? Yeah, you've got to put the work in. Yeah. But you, you, as a boxer, you want to be training two, three times a day minimum. Mm -hmm. You do, and plus running, gym work, strength and conditioning, sparring. You want to try and you want to give it everything. Exactly. And you're only 19. Obviously, you're, yeah. you're not even going to grow into your full frame until you're what, probably 25, 26. Yeah. So you've got so long yet. Still got time, got a while. <laughs> what, what are your goals in boxing? Go the whole way, hopefully. Go the whole way. Uh, take over the amateurs, which I'm hoping to do this season. Win everything. And then uh, pros, just take it step by step. Obviously, the main goal is world champion. But you, the pros, you've got to take it step by step. You start thinking forward in pro game. Like Moses Toma said, if you start thinking uh, through your like the fight you've got, these are tough journeymen nowadays. These journeymen come to fight, and it's like ten ounce gloves. If they land, it's heavyweight boxing. You get caught, you go sleep. Mm -hmm. So pro game, take it step by step, but definitely world champion. Brilliant. Definitely, that's that's the that's the goal. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on, yeah, mate. Yeah, I appreciate it. And I look Brilliant forward to seeing to see your it. journey as well. Yeah, thank you very much.